Okay, one last little concept in chapter four is the introduction of circular motion. We're just introducing it for now. So just a couple basic equations. I want you to imagine a merry-go-round. I don't see these as often on playgrounds anymore, but the big circular disc, you'd run and get it going and jump on. When you were off the merry-go-round, I would imagine most of us wanted to sit on the outside edge. But if you had a little brother or sister, you didn't let them sit on the outside edge. You made them sit inside and hold on to the bar on the inside. Well, depending upon what sort of sibling you were. If you were thinking of your sibling's well-being, you made them sit on the inside. Why? Acceleration increases as you Right, the acceleration is bigger the further out we get because the speed is bigger the further out we get. A person sitting on this outside edge is traveling a lot faster than a person sitting on the inside. The merry-go-round on a whole is traveling at a constant uniform rate. But that's a rate in terms of an angle per second. These people in meters per second, the actual number of meters they cover in a particular second, they're different. The person on the outside edge, for example, if we just do half a turn, have a lot further to go than a person on the inside edge. So their, their speed is much bigger on the outside than on the inside. When we talk about circular motion, there's a couple other terms we use in, term, uh, in place of just regular position. So regular position in meters that would be the arc length. At some point in time, I'm sure you've talked about arc length. You may have forgotten. Arc length is simply the radius times the angle that we've moved through. This is theta. Theta is the same for both people, regardless of where they're sitting. The difference is r. r is how far away they are from the center. The person further out has farther to go. The arc length is different. When we talk about circular motion, we tend to talk about what we call the angular position. Simply theta. Theta is the same for both of them. They've moved through the same angle. They've taken the same amount of time to move through the same angle. So, in order to be able to talk about circular motion, a lot of times we talk about the angular position instead of the actual position. Since the angular position is the same for both of them, and the actual position is different. By the way, the units we use for this are radians. Likewise, similar to what we did with velocity in general, velocity is the derivative of the position with respect to time. Now a person sitting on the outside edge, for example, is r changing? No, but theta is changing. So when we take the derivative of this, we're going to get r times d theta dt. The angular velocity is this d theta dt. The symbol we use for it is the Greek letter omega, the lowercase omega is the symbol we use for it. The units it has is radians per second. So we can say here that 
width of linear velocity, the number of meters per second is equal to the radius times the angular velocity. Before, acceleration is the derivative of velocity with respect to time. But velocity is r times omega. r is still not changing, so we get r times d omega dt. This is r times alpha is the letter we use for angular acceleration. Acceleration is related to what we call the linear acceleration. It's related to whether or not the object is speeding up or slowing down. So if the wheel, the merry-go-round is spinning faster and faster and faster, then it has an angular acceleration. Or if it's slowing down and spinning slower, slower, and slower, then it has an angular acceleration. Okay? So the calculus relationships are just like we had before. If we have angular position and we take the derivative, we have angular velocity. If we have angular velocity, we take the derivative, we get angular acceleration. And vice versa, we can work backwards. If we have angular acceleration, we can integrate and find velocity. Velocity, we can integrate and find position. We end up with a set of kinematic equations for angular motion. If we have a constant angular acceleration, if we have a constant angular acceleration, then we end up with a set of kinematic equations that look very similar to the ones we've been using, only we, we replace all the x's with thetas, all the v's with omegas, and all the a's with alphas. same way we've been using the kinematic equations already. So we can figure out how long it would take for something to stop spinning, for example. Or how long it would take to get it spinning to it at a certain rate. There's one other concept that applies here. This acceleration over here is called the linear acceleration or the tangential acceleration because it's tangent to the circle. We, all the problems we've done so far have dealt with linear acceleration or tangential acceleration. They have dealt with an object speeding up or slowing down. But remember, acceleration, just in general, acceleration by definition is a change in velocity. Velocity has a magnitude and a direction. You can speed up or slow down, that means change the magnitude, or you can change direction. That would be an acceleration as well. We haven't talked about the acceleration in terms of changing direction. That acceleration is called the centripetal acceleration. <coughs> It's aptly named, the word centripetal means center seeking. Any object that is changing direction has a centripetal acceleration, and that centripetal acceleration is pointing towards the center. So the kid sitting on the merry-go-round has an acceleration 
pointing in towards the center. That's not this. That's not this. The angular acceleration, this acceleration deals with whether the merry-go-round itself is speeding up or slowing down. So if the merry-go-round is moving at a constant rate, there would be no angular acceleration. There would be no linear acceleration. But there is a centripetal acceleration. Something has to make the kid move in a circle. The kid's velocity is constantly changing. The velocity is always tangent to the circle, wherever the kid happens to be. If the velocity is changing, then there must be an acceleration causing that to happen. So the acceleration that causes the child to move in the circle is called the centripetal acceleration. It is always pointed towards the center. the circle. Okay. So the direction of this acceleration is always changing as well. The value for centripetal acceleration, I'm going to put a subscript C on the A. So still use A to mean acceleration, but put a subscript of C to mean centripetal acceleration specifically. The centripetal acceleration depends upon how fast the object's moving, and it depends upon how far the object is from the center. So V being just how fast that kid is going in meters per second, R how far the kid is from the center. We can write it in terms of omega if you want, since V is equal to R times omega, V squared will be R squared omega squared. So we can write it in terms of omega, the angular speed, how fast in radians per second it's going. But the centripetal acceleration always points towards the center of the circle the object's moving in. So for example, traveling at a constant rate of 30 meters per second around a circle that has a radius of 40 meters. What is the centripetal acceleration of this car? So the centripetal acceleration, its value, depends only on how fast the object is going and how far it is from the center of the circle. So 30 meters per second squared over the 40 meters. 900 over 40. Twenty-two point five meters per second. Centripetal acceleration is actual meters per second squared. It's the centripetal acceleration is the one responsible for making something change direction. So move in a circle of some sort. Or at least part of a circle. You don't have to complete the circle. As long as you're moving in a portion of the circle, you have a centripetal acceleration. And it has units of meters per second squared. Other questions? So the problems related to this rotational motion, very basic. 
like this, given a velocity, a speed, and a radius, tell me what the centripetal acceleration is. What about the direction? What direction would the centripetal acceleration be in right now? Oh, it's to point towards the center. So if this was a north, south, east, west, it would be west. Left is fine too. Yes? Can you explain to me one more time why the acceleration is pointing inward to the centripetal? Acceleration is always a change in velocity over change in time. If we were to look at the velocity at one instant and the next instant and take v final minus v initial, the result always points into the center. If you take the final vector minus the initial vector, which puts it in the opposite direction, the result always points down towards the center.